the attention we receive is just there because most part of the world just can't understand what normal is anymore. We have been trained to a certain level of materialism and buying and being the best and creating small robot kits and <laughs> yeah. that it's that that's the normal way of life. So if a guy like me with, with my family steps out of that system, it's like, wow, what is he doing? He's going to lose everything. No, I'm not going to lose everything because if I lose everything, I just start over. Mm-hmm. I seek for, I search for a job. I start working again. I build up everything what I have lost at that moment, but it's still just materialism. It's not that I'm losing my family or my dear friends. It's just materialism. Yeah. But the world is so fascinated by the materialism and the, the governments anticipate on that by training the people to want to have and have and have, that they just don't have any time to realize that this blockchain is going to be a huge change. And that's the reason I think it will still take 20 till 20 years before people um, will accept that we can trust each other again and we don't need a lawyer or we don't need a, a broker or we don't need a real estate uh, agent we can we can figure it out ourselves i think i think a lot of people are are ready for it and want it but they just have a lot of fear and i think a lot of people make their daily decisions based on fear uh, and, and not of chasing your dreams or your passion but just the fear of losing something you already have and I think most decisions you make on that based on fear are just wrong decisions. This is episode 38 of the Own Stream podcast featuring Didi Taihutu. Welcome to this week's Own Stream podcast. I'm Stephen Shelley and my usual co-host, uh, Teresa Scoba is not with me this week. Uh, we are back in San Diego from our trip, and we um, had lined up some child care for this morning to talk to Didi Taihutu, our guest this week, and child care fell through. So Teresa jumped in and has been watching Sophia this morning while I spoke with Didi and while I record this brief intro. Um, so anyway, it's just a solo role for me today, um, although... Teresa and I share a mutual interest in cryptocurrency, and we kind of formed the questions for Didi as a team. Um, so her voice is heard through the conversation for sure. Uh, but Didi is a guy that we were connected with through a mutual friend. Uh, big thanks to Mark, if you're listening. And we, Mark and I were talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and this powerful, powerful and exciting time we live in where virtually every system is crumbling down, and not the least of which is currency. And anyway, I was talking to Mark about you know our excitement about cryptocurrencies, our investments, and what we were learning. And anyway, he suggested we talk to his friend Didi, who uh, some uh, fairly recently, um, and he'll get into a lot of the details in the conversation, of course, but fairly recently he and his wife and three kids sold everything. They realized that they were basically spinning their wheels in their life, um, kind of managing their stuff and trying to make enough money to keep their stuff. And like a lot of people looked around and saw that this stuff um, was really impeding their nimbleness, their sense of adventure, and most dur- sef- uh, most uh, certainly their um, the, the meaning of their life was kind of absorbed in stuff. As, and, and, you know, the whole minimalist movement really honors – the trend now of getting rid of stuff, selling everything, giving it away, and not being a prisoner to those things. And that's exactly what they did. And they took all the money that they uh, raised through selling everything, and they invested it in Bitcoin and other and some other cryptocurrencies too. He talks a little bit about his portfolio in here. Um, but nevertheless, they sunk it all into cryptocurrencies, and now they live in a campsite in southern, in the southern Netherlands. So he and I spoke from a little chalet, I guess, near where they're staying. And Didi, I guess, somewhat recently made this public and has been swarmed with press. Uh, he has, um, I think, uh, all sorts of documentary filmmakers, um, newspaper publications, online publications are traveling to meet with him, to interview him, and certainly they're talking to him over the phone and... 
we're honored to talk to him because his story is very interesting in that um, he's a guy who, I guess, rose to some prominence in a business he started himself. He's an entrepreneur and then realized, of course, as I mentioned, that this lifestyle and what he was doing and, and all the stuff they had, the cars and motorcycles and the house and all the fancy, you know, things weren't really contributing to their happiness in any way. And they started selling everything, invested in Bitcoin and have been traveling a lot ever since. Um, but <clears throat> what what has motivated him might surprise you. And in, in a lot of the articles I've read about him, this is not made too clear. But what motivates them is not so much to become millionaires, which it seems if, 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 if cryptocurrency moves in the direction that many people think it will, including me and including Didi, he, he will become a millionaire, as will I and Teresa and many, many others um, who have um, uh, gotten into that game fairly early on, and it still is fairly early on, so it's not too late by any means for you to get in on that if it's interesting to you. But to him, it wasn't about necessarily making a lot of money as it was just simply about being in, in alignment with what he believes in, and cryptocurrency certainly is in alignment with that, where all the middlemen are removed. It's not about banks. It's not about being kind of controlled by governments who, or, or, the, or the Federal Reserve. It's hard to know the U.S. who really controls uh, the money flow. I guess it really is the Federal Reserve. Um, <clears throat> and other countries, too, where currencies fluctuate and, and, and um, move up and down based on, you know, the, the climate of the government at that time. And anyway, there's countless examples of, of uh, you know, people feeling pressured and infringed upon by the way governments um, manage money. And so it feels in alignment to be, to be free, to be a minimalist, to be um, kind of in charge of one's own money, to be in control of one's own money, and really in, in control of one's own ability to exchange value. So for Didi, it's not about becoming a millionaire as much as it is about kind of being the captain of his own ship. And they have no intention to make a lot of money and go right back out and buy a bunch of big houses. That's not the idea. They want to stay nimble. They want to travel. And they want to help others kind of find and cultivate that freedom for themselves. So it's very powerful. You know, for him, it's not a get rich quick or get rich quick or, or even a get rich path as much as it is a path of being in alignment with what interests him, what excites him, and what feels true. Um, our Bitcoin interest is somewhat similar in that it feels completely in alignment with everything we've talked about on this podcast and um, about kind of taking control back away from many of these entities that can, at least in some ways, lord over you through the currency system, through the fiat currency system. So cryptocurrency is very, very interesting. I think it's getting bigger. DD thinks it's getting bigger. And many, many other people we listen to think it's getting bigger too. So in this in this interview, you're going to learn a lot about his story and about his principles and why they did what they did, why they sold everything and invested it all in cryptocurrencies, but also about kind of what their aims are, what their intentions are. And I hope you'll be able to see kind of behind these decisions into the kind of mind that Didi has, his humility and warmth and generosity really shine through here. And um, I think that's far more valuable than how much money is in your bank account. So a lot, a lot of good stuff here in this conversation with Didi Taihutu. Um, before we get into that, I do want to mention we are kind of back from our trip. You know, it's it's we're back in San Diego now for a little while, and the next direction is emerging. Uh, in last week's podcast, which we have yet to record, and as I'm speaking to you now, uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So if you're interested in what's kind of coming next for us, be sure to listen to episode 37. Um, but I do want to throw it open. We've, we've, we've been quiet about our coaching work primarily because we knew we'd be traveling and we knew we might might or might not have Wi-Fi where we were going, which was a wise move. Um, but nevertheless, now we're back with a little more consistent uh, ability to schedule things and to, to uh, speak to people through Skype or even in person. So our coaching work is now, we have a few slots we're opening up for people. If this is interesting to you. The way to follow up with us is go to our coaching page on the website. It's just one of the tabs in the top right fill out the form on that page and that sets in motion a process which begins with a free 30-minute call where we talk to you and kind of learn more about you and you can learn more about our coaching package 
um, uh, our coaching package is rather where and how we can help you and if it makes sense or not. In some cases it doesn't and we have people we can refer you to, but we've seen some startling and stunning, and I mean that very sincerely, um, turnarounds made by a number of people recently. And we actually saw one of our very wonderful, warm, <laughs> lovely clients in Sedona recently, and <clears throat> she's totally thriving. She was working in advertising for almost 20 years, and now she's got her own business. She's able to travel, spend more time with family. She looks and feels great. These are the kind of goals that we put in motion uh, for people, and those, those are those are kind of what we believe in and what we want our, our clients to experience. So it's really all about kind of finding what your alignment is and then living true to that and giving you tools to live true to that. And helping you make radical changes to your lifestyle in order to be in alignment with that, trusting that all, all will be well from that place. Lots more to talk about with that. But if it's interesting to you, go to our coaching page, fill out the form, and we will uh, follow up uh, for that free call soon. Okay, so that's enough from me. I'll be back afterwards for a quick wrap-up. But until then, please enjoy this amazing conversation with Didi Taihutu. Well, let's uh, let's begin. Didi Taihutu, welcome to the uh, Own Stream podcast. Hi, thank you. <laughs> it's great to have you. Um, actually, what we can do now, um, I guess, just to start with, just so people kind of understand, I'll, I'll kind of I'll, I'll introduce our conversation in a little intro. But we were introduced through a mutual friend, and um, I guess the topic was was cryptocurrency and he said oh you should talk to my friend Didi who's um really involved in that let's just say <laughs> and yeah. and um and because you you've taken you, you, I think more than anybody I've ever met you sort of understand the opportunity that's in front of us in terms of cryptocurrency right now and have really plunged into that um with both feet and um based on what my wife and I know, and Teresa would usually be on an interview with me, but she's she's got some other stuff she's handling right now. Uh, but this is kind of an amazing opportunity for people, and I think what you provide for our audience is an opportunity uh, for them to understand how one person is dealing with this, how one person is stepping into this world, and perhaps inspire folks to take action because um, there seems to me to be kind of an amazing chance right now to grow what some people are calling is generational wealth. And um, so anyway, that's kind of the, the, the predicate of our conversation. And maybe to get us started, you could tell us a little bit about just your background, your kind of basic bio and a little bit about your family and sort of what your life was like before this notion of investing in cryptocurrency occurred to you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> <laughs> I met my wife at a young age, and uh, we had a pretty good time. And when I was about 24 years, I had a great job for a great company. And I was 24 at that moment, and then my mother died. Mm. She was 48 years, so... Um, she was very young, young. so I asked my um, boss if I could get a few days off, and he was like, no, you're too important, you can get, get only get two days. So for me that was, wow, I'm not telling you my dog died, I'm telling you my mom died. Right. So that's not good for me, so I threw my keys of the car from the company car and the, and, and the company itself on the table, and I left. And I left to my wife and I told her what happened and we booked a ticket and we started our first around the world trip. Oh, sweet. And you had three kids at that time or was this before kids? No, at that time we didn't have kids yet. So oh. then the, we came back from a world trip and I started my own business. And my business, I started just teaching people computer skills with one computer and it became two, three, four, five computers. At the end it was about uh, 50 computers and some employees and everything. And I was running the hamster wheel really hard. <laughs> yeah. I, run, I was running as fast as I could to get all the luxury stuff I was taught that would make me happy. Right. And um, it made me happy for a long time. And then in 2014 with Christmas, 
Uh, my father called me and he told me, did he have to tell you something? Um, you're coming over for uh, New Year's Eve, but um, I am diagnosed with cancer and I only have one year to live. So that was a shock for me. So I drove up to him. We had New Year's Eve, a lot of talk. And at that moment, I realized, wow, my father is 61. My, fo my mother was 48. Life can go really fast. Yeah. And the only thing I'm doing right now is running and buying luxury stuff and running and buying luxury stuff and traveling around the world to work. And at that point, I already had three kids, uh, three daughters. So um, then we took care of my father for a year. So I dropped all my businesses, also the coins, the bitcoins, everything. And in January 2016, my father died. Mm -hmm. And then it was totally clear okay, now I have to change my life. I have to stop running. I have to stay, start uh, participating in the education of my children. I want to see them grow up. I want to see them um, explore the world. I just, just want to be there for them. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to be the man that cuts the meat on Sunday. <laughs> so um, at that point, it was January 2016. I told my wife, I'm selling the, my company. So we sold the company, I sold everything we had, and we started to travel around the world with our family. We did that for nine months. And uh, during the nine months, we discovered that um, we were a pretty happy family without all the luxury stuff at home. Right. We just had three backpacks. We were with five persons. We lived in guest houses and everything, and it was very, it was very a very beautiful time, and uh, we never had anything like um, we miss that at home or the kids miss nothing and so the, the, there was an eye opener for us sure now how old Just were the kids moment. during that trip how old were your kids during that trip uh, my kids were uh, 12 10 and 7 years old oh wow man what an amazing yeah. experience nine months you said it you were was, on the road that's incredible it was incredible it was we, it was a little bit of a problem because we didn't um we were in Holland, it's it's like a rule. The kids have to go to school. So I asked them to politely, can my kids please skip school for a few months? Of course, the answer in Holland is no. <laughs> so um, we just went. Wow. Um, now I'm facing the consequences. I have to be in court next Tuesday, I think, um, to get to pick up a fine or whatever they want to do. But we don't care. Yeah. We took what we wanted to do and we did what we wanted to do. and. And that uh, brought us up to the point where we are now. So during a world trip, I was in Bali and one of my friends called me and he told me, Didi, please check your coins. You still have coins? Yeah, I still have some coins. And he checked them. I said, I'm on the beach, man. I'm enjoying the sunset with my kids and drinking my Bacardi Coke. I don't believe I'm interested in the checking my coins. But right. he was very persuaded. He was like, check them. So I checked the coins and they were like, Times 60, 50, 60. Yeah. So we earned a lot of, um, of a lot of, we earned some money with it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it called me again. It was like, okay, I'm into the crypto and this is crossing my path all the time, every time again. We don't believe in coincidence as a family. Yeah. We believe everything happens for a reason. Um, so this was again happening for a reason. And because we, realized we didn't need a lot of stuff to be happy we just made a plan and we said to each other on the beach in bali we sell everything we sell our house we sell all our cars or motorcycles or bicycles toys everything we don't need we sell it put it into bitcoin and we go enjoy life see this that's is the all story your, in short that was all your stuff back in the netherlands that was all stuff in the netherlands yeah so you sold it all and you put it all into bitcoin we sold literally literally everything yeah. My shoes, my luxury clothes, everything. <laughs> you, had, you must have had yeah. some badass shoes, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. So this is Bali, by the way. Wow. Yeah, only great things happen in Bali. I've, uh, everything, it's yeah. It's amazing there. My goodness. Yeah, I've seen some pictures of you guys like in some beautiful tropical locations, and I was wondering, like, maybe they're traveling now. Uh, but it sounds like you've kind of – you've done your traveling, and now you're back in Holland kind of – where are you living? Are you in like a rental or something, a small house? What's the story? Um, no, because we sold everything. We um, we moved into a campsite. So oh, wow. Okay. Cool. No, so we're living on a in a small chalet. They call it chalet. Yeah. It's about uh, fifty square meters. So um, 
it's not big. It's, it's really not big, but it's it's really cozy and we're enjoying it. And we are cleaning up now, so we're still selling a lot of stuff. What was in the house, we we, uh, we uh, put it all in storage and we're selling from storage. And if I hope we are, will be done in December and then uh, we will start traveling again. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, just, just so you know, um, my wife and daughter and I, uh, within the last six months, have has sold 99% of our stuff. We sold our house, and we moved into a um, camper van, a Sprinter, uh, one of those big yeah. vans. And we've been traveling around the West for three months or so. And and as you accurately put it, like we have not once on the trip said, geez, I wish we could be back in our house or our, I wish I could have my – TV or whatever it may be, you know, it's just, it's, it's, no. it's, it just doesn't even, it doesn't come back as like some longing, like, oh, geez, I wish we had that sofa, no. you know, it just doesn't. No, you don't need it. You don't need it, exactly. Well, when did you first learn about Bitcoin? And it sounds like you've had a few relationships with that over the last, say, six, seven years. I think Bitcoin's been around yeah. since 09, so I guess that's about eight years now. Yeah, it was in around 2010. Uh, I had a own company, and, and a friend of mine visited me at, at the company, and he told me, like, Didi, did you hear of Bitcoin? And I was, no, never heard of it. Tell me, what what is it? Right. And he told me the, the technical part of it and what was possible then. And I was like, okay, I was a businessman, so, yeah, let's invest. And we started mining Bitcoins. And we did quite well. And um, after a year or two, the Bitcoin was, like, heading for $400. And we were like, wow, it can't go higher than this. It's really not possible that it goes higher. And and then it dropped to $200. And then we made a decision to sell everything and um, to make to break even with our investment and everything because we still didn't know what it was. It was we were just mining it. And it was pretty new then. It was just one year old. So we didn't want to take a too big risk. And then we sold uh, most of our uh, coins we sold. And uh, a part we, uh, we kept in the safe. In the wallet. Yeah. And that was the first introduction, and that was a very interesting one because we invested like I think thirty thousand euros in mining rigs. We started mining, and it was really crazy, crazy time. Of course, yeah, it was just uh, <laughs> a, a long day. But, uh, it was after after we quitted the Bitcoin. I thought we started to mine the doggy coin, doggy coin. It's called uh -huh. right. And we mined like millions of them. And that coin was the same coin that uh, went times 30 when we were in Bali. So we had a few million coins of that. So, yeah, we, we made a few uh, bucks of profit on that coin then. Yeah. yeah the and by the way, at the time of this conversation, I'm just checking, Bitcoin right now is worth $7,540 US. Yeah. It's up about yeah. 190 bucks just today alone. And in the last... Yeah couple of weeks maybe a month it's gone from yeah. i think 45 48 to 75 yeah. and um and yeah. it's climbing and um i guess what what you know when you when you decided to go all in with with cryptocurrencies did your was your family all on board was everybody like yeah we, we we're excited about this this is a great idea talk about that a little bit kind of like you may be just the nucleus of your family and then maybe anybody outside of that that relatives etc yeah yeah it was the first how everybody reacted was like you're totally out of your mind Didi. you're 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 yeah i can't say fuck on camera you're fucking crazy <laughs> what are right. you doing you have everything you have your cars your house you are so happy and you travel and but we weren't happy we were my wife and i were getting nauseous of all the stuff we were having so like we, even when we were in the house we were like let's go out it's we, we were just not happy of all the stuff we were it was really like man why do i have all the stuff why do we keep it why do i buy it and so a lot of people were like it's not it's not okay my wife was uh, at first she was like did he in bitcoins she didn't even know what a bitcoin was yeah um, but then i told her told her like but we can combine it we can combine minimalism with the bitcoins we can teach our children that luxury stuff is not the goal of life. It's living. Um, it's being happy without stuff. That's what we want to teach our children. And that was also the, the, the primary goal 
um, of this whole, this adventure. It was not becoming a millionaire or whatever. It was be, because we wanted to see our children grow up the way um, they should grow up, not materialistic, not not um, running the hamster wheel because other people want it. We want to make beautiful kids, and we want them to flower flourish like they should flourish as a kid. And that was the main decision. And then we decided to sell everything. And then if you sell everything, you get a bag of money and you put your bag of money in front of you. And then you're thinking, what will I do? Will I put it in my closet? No, it's too much. It's not safe. Right. Um, will I put it in the bank? No, that's not safe. Our, in our opinion, yes. the bank was not safe. Mine too. Yeah. A lot of banks, a lot of devaluating of money. And we don't trust the banks anymore. Um, Sure. The way we did. So the only option for us was like, let's try it, Bitcoin, let's do it. Why? It crosses our path all the life. This has to mean something. We don't trust the banks. We cannot put it at home. We will put it in Bitcoin. We trust the blockchain. We trust the block, the Bitcoin. We think that, is the, that there is a re revolution going on in the monetary system. We think the next step of the evolution of money is the, the blockchain and Bitcoin. So let's let's face it and let's accept it. And let's don't talk to talk, but just walk to walk and do it. And that's how we did it. <laughs> and and so if you're looking at your, your bag of money, one question Teresa asked my wife before she had to run was, okay, so you've got, you've got this whole amount. How much of it did you invest and how much did you keep just to kind of keep yourself... You know, you're renting, I guess, a campsite there. You've got to buy food every day. Like, how? What, what was the allocation there? Nothing. One hundred percent, all in. All in. Got it. So you're all still in. working. You still have, I guess, you no, guys. We no. don't. We don't work. Um, I'm, I'm day trading, so I earn a little bit of money with day trading. I'm sweet. And um, because we're still selling a lot of stuff that we had, um, we calculated if we have like about twenty-five euros till thirty euros per day. We can live a very happy life. We have enough food, drinks, and everything. So every day, if we sell something like a closet for 500 euros, we can live a month. Right. Cool. And that's how we make money at the moment. Just and we, we keep all the money in the in the coins. Yeah. Cool. Well, you alluded to it, so let's. I'd like for you to 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 share what your view of this revolution is, because it seems that way to us too. And it's not just in um, currency. It's kind of across the board. You know, uh, everything seems to be – all the old systems seem to be crumbling. And yeah. um, and so part of our, our intention with this podcast is to highlight the new, the new paradigms, the new forms, the new structures that are emerging. And you would be, at least in our series, the first really intelligent person on talking about – Cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. But cryptocurrency, at least right now, is maybe not – it's not a great term in my view. But nevertheless, it's what we use to kind of describe all these new currencies coming on yeah. the market, which are basically data-driven currencies. And yeah. would you then, from your point of view, talk about this revolution as you referred to it? Because it seems that way to us too, and it's a very exciting time. Um. I think it's a really exciting time. I think people, one of the most important things you have to know that if every time there is a revolution, people seem to neglect it, neglect it. People seem not to see it. People seem more busy with running the hamster wheel than um, evalu evaluating what is happening around them. Mm. Um, but if you if you if you look at the core, for example, in Holland. Um, you, you, we were used to receive like interest if, if we put our savings in a bank. Um, now we don't receive interest anymore. And next year we have to pay interest to put savings in a bank. Wow. Pay interest so, to the bank. Wow. To put your money in a saving account in a bank, we are going to pay interest. So if you analyze this, then something is wrong with that company. <laughs> That right. company is not financial healthy anymore because else they wouldn't ask you to pay some extra interest for your money that you're lending them as, 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 sure. as it is. And if you look at the, that, that's the financial part. And if you look at the people, people are awakening all over the world. Sure. People are getting more spiritual. People are getting more 
back to their cells. People are seeing what is happening. And so people are there are ready for a revolution as well. And if you just take the blockchain and you see how much this will change worldwide for so much, so many people, those three th uh, things combined make it a revolution. It's like 3.2 billion people in the world don't have a bank account. Mm -hmm. 3.2 billion people. The blockchain, the Bitcoin, makes it possible for everybody with a mobile phone to be their own bank. Mm -hmm. People in, let's say Zimbabwe, who can't buy anything on, on eBay or whatever, they are... If they have a telephone and they have some bitcoins, they can buy their stuff on eBay. They are not even close to that now. So this, this is so. This this change will be so immense and so big for so many people and so many companies that we think of it as a revolution of the monetary system. Mm -hmm. And indeed, it's, it's correct what you're saying. It's it's not just the money. It's all the data. It's everything. It's the contracts. It's. It's everything is going to change, and the blockchain is going to take care of that. And the Bitcoin is just one big marketing sign of the blockchain now. But it's really going to change, and it's going to change all our lives in, in, in huge. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? So you you referred to the blockchain. What's your definition of the blockchain? How how do you assume assume that I'm I've never heard of the blockchain? How do you describe that? And then maybe we can kind of. Um, talk to people who are very new to this and may, may have heard some of these things, but maybe we can give them um, some idea about what these terms actually mean. Yeah, I, I think, if, how, how can you explain it easily? Yeah. I think the blockchain, um, the, the main reason for me that the blockchain will be very important in the next few years is that it um, it's very transparent, it's very honest, and it gives back a part of um, power that the people lost in the last decades because of third parties. Right. And I think the blockchain main um, uh, revolution, revolutionary part is that it uh, makes it possible for people to do things without a third party. Um, so they won't be controlled as much as they are at the moment. They can. Uh, trust each other and they can um, send each other money or whatever through a blockchain without uh, a third party to have to control it or accept it or um, so that's what what I think is what the internet did for information so 20 years ago nobody heard of Google and nobody could seek on Google on, on Wikipedia whatever uh, uh, um, meaning a, a certain product had, and I think this blockchain will be the same um, impact on humanity, but only about data. So where the internet took care mm -hmm. of information, the blockchain will take care of a total new view of um, working with data. Yeah. And data is, yeah, all our world is data driven at the moment. So yeah, a lot of things are going to change. You know, it comes to mind as, as you're talking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about our recent, my wife and I sold our home three or four months ago. And in that process of selling our home, talk about third parties. We had so many other people involved in that quote unquote deal. And yeah. basically, as I look back on that, I can see probably 10 places in that process where a blockchain process would be more efficient and yeah. it would eliminate the need for a third party to come in and validate, say, that an inspection had been done. Or we wouldn't need yeah. a real estate agent. We wouldn't need a broker simply because yeah. the blockchain is an objective software-driven means for you and I to validate if something has been done. You know, Let's say I fix the toilet. Oh, okay, then that, then that takes us to the next phase of the process, and now more money is released. Now maybe the deal is done. I fixed all the problems in the apartment. Yep. And it's just, it's just we, we, we can do it with each other because there's a component in between that governs the financial interaction, but that can also allow us to more fully own the deal with each other, validating that certain things have been done, certain boxes have been checked, thus eliminating the need for a real estate agent and and maybe most importantly, all those lawyers out there. Um, you know, in the U.S., there's 
my wife, uh, Teresa, was trained as a lawyer. She doesn't practice as a lawyer now, but she often talks about how, you know, th- this is a culture absorbed with lawyers and legal and legality, and it would kind of eliminate much of that. Um, yeah, I think it probably will. Um, but I, th- I think it will take some time because people are just, um, I just still too, um, they, they just are, are not, not all people are ready for this. Yeah. Um, and how, how do I know that? Because the, the step we are taking with my family um, is totally normal for us. It feels natural. Yeah. But we are receiving like tons of media attention now. Right. The first two weeks we were like, my wife and I were like, did we say something wrong in the media? Did we say something what makes all these people so interested in, in our story? There is, we, we must have said something wrong because we didn't understand all the attention and we still don't understand part of the attention, but uh, attention, but we are starting to realize now that the attention we receive is just there because most part of the world <laughs> um, uh, just can't understand what normal is anymore. Yes, right. They are on a, we have been trained to a certain level of materialism and buying and um, being the best and uh, creating small robot kits and <laughs> yeah. that it's that that's the normal way of life. So if a, a guy like me with, with my family steps out of that system, it's like, wow, what is he doing? He's going to lose everything. No, I'm not going to lose everything because if I lose everything, I just start over. Mm-hmm. I seek for, I search for a job. I start working again. I build up everything what I have lost at that moment but it's still just materialism it's not that i'm losing my family or my dear friends it's just materialism yeah but the world is so fascinated by the materialism and the, the governments anticipate on that by training the people to want to have and have and have that they just don't have any time to realize that this blockchain is going to be a huge change and that's the reason I think it will still take 20 to 20 years before people um, will accept um, that we can trust each other again. And we don't need a lawyer or we don't need a, a broker or we don't need a real estate uh, agent. We can we can figure it out ourselves. Sure. It's like it was in the old time days where we exchanged products without a third party. Right. Um, but right. this step is too big because, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people are um, are ready for it and want it, but they just have a lot of fear. And I think a lot of people make their daily decisions based on fear, uh, and, and not of chasing your dreams or your passion, but just the fear of losing something you already have. Mm-hmm. And, and I think most decisions you make on that based on fear are just wrong decisions. So that's why I also think a lot of people are still in fear for the blockchain, for the bitcoins, for, for, for all the coins, um, and the acceptation of the time for them to accept that it is really possible to exchange stuff through a blockchain, I think it will take a few years. Well, specifically, when you, when you talk about you know um, your investments um, or what what you've bought into have you have you been all in on Bitcoin or are there other coins other cryptocurrencies that are interesting to you and at this time there are about 900 cryptocurrencies out there and yeah. I think most of them are 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 not to be taken seriously but I think more than just Bitcoin there are a handful that people seem to think are worth investing in and that will be around for the long term what's your view on that and what have you kind of bought into yeah at first because we didn't i really didn't have a lot i just knew a bitcoin yeah to be honest i I was just a normal business guy and i i heard of bitcoin saw it as an opportunity so the only thing we could buy when we started was only bitcoin so we went all in on the bitcoin and because we did it we received a lot of media attention again and a lot of people were contacting me and like, Didi, are you really all in on Bitcoin? I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I don't know anything else. I know there are other coins, but we went all in on the Bitcoin. 
and it, it's working for us. We're making profit on it, so it's. I think it's good. But uh, at this point now, I'm. I'm. How do you say it in English? Diversifying it a little yeah, bit. So diversifying exactly. Yep. Diversifying it a little bit. Yep. So we have like about seventy uh, percent Bitcoin and thirty percent in altcoins. I believe Ethereum is a very good coin. I believe Neo will do fine. Um, I think OMG uh, will participate in the future as well. Um, and a few other small sure. coins, uh, which I think can do something to contribute to the world and and and, and uh, um, make more value of my money, of our money, sure. I have to say. Sure. It kills me if I say my money. <laughs> <laughs> And so when you're doing this, are you are you doing this on your own? I'd like for people to get a sense of like how accessible this is. You know, this is not something you need. You don't call a broker in some skyscraper in New York City no, to do no, this no. for you. I, no, I just go on the Internet. I opened a wallet and that's really easy. It's like downloading a game or downloading whatever a, a mobile app they need people on iPhone. And I downloaded that one. I went to another website where I could buy Bitcoins with my bank account. In Holland, we have something that's called Ideal. So it's a, I think in the US it's called Direct Pay or something like that. Uh -huh. And and then you can just buy it from your bank account and you buy like 10 Bitcoins or something and they send them to your wallet and it's, that's all. And then you keep them and you hold them or huddle them like they, <laughs> the crypto say it. And, and then you just wait till it gets a little bit more worth. And a wallet is a piece of software too that kind of holds yeah. the data in a secure location essentially is that right um yeah yeah, yeah. a wallet is a, a wallet is, is the same as your own bank account so in, indeed it's, it's it's a software that holds your data and holds your coins you can put it on a digital wallet wallet you can put it on a hardware wallet there are like different types of wallet and every wallet has its own security um, advantages um, I have everything on a hardware wallet because I'm like in very deep, so there's a lot of money involved. Sure, so sure. I have to, I, I, I'd love to keep some control on myself <laughs> on my hand. Um, but it's nothing else as a, as your own bank account. It's the same. You see a figure of money you uh, you owe, uh, you have. And it's the same if you log into your bank account. You see just some numbers. You don't see the cash. You just see the numbers. Right. Right. <laughs> What, yeah. um, what, which wallet are you using? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, the Bitbox and uh, the Ledger uh, Nano S. Yeah, we just got the Ledger Nano yeah. S. Yeah. yeah, and the Bitbox is a wallet from Switzerland. Um, it's just for Bitcoins, but I think it's, um, it's a really nice uh, wallet. It works very good and it's really safe. Yeah. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss safe, I call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so what do you think, is there a point at which in your head where you're thinking, you know, we'll sell at X plateau or X level, or are you, are you a little more liquid than that? A little more fluid, uh, rather? I'm, I'm, I'm really a strong believer. <laughs> uh -huh. So um, in my view... In a few years time, we can use uh, cryptocurrency to pay at a grocery store, supermarket, or um, whatever you want to buy. Uh, I don't, I don't know for sure if it will be the Bitcoin or will be another coin, to, uh, which we will use in daily transactions. But I hope it will come to a point that we don't have to exchange it to money again, and we can just use it to pay our bills and everything. And it's getting more and more. In Holland, we can order food with Bitcoins. We can pay our internet, um, how do you say it? Uh, your internet connection with Bitcoins. Right. You can pay whatever you want with Bitcoins already. But um, the next step is the, the physical part, so the, the, the grocery stores and everything. And if that becomes uh, so far, then yeah, you know, I don't think I will be changing it back any more anymore to fiat money. Uh, yes, to fiat right. currency. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one big thing that many people are are kind of looking at, you may be as well, but is Amazon. I think they're sitting on I, apparently at, at an upcoming board meeting. Who knows when? I don't know how often their board meets, but 
there's a there's a conversation ongoing there where they're going to either start accepting Bitcoin or maybe even create their own. Um, yeah. And apparently, I learned the other day that um, I guess they Amazon themselves has started buying up domains like Amazon cryptocurrency. Yeah. Like they started like m- taking action in that space t- that indicates that they're they're going to make a move in this direction or is that something you're looking for too? Are you, are you uh, yeah. monitoring that like we are? <laughs> yeah. I saw all the domains they registered and I, I think they already had a Bitcoin dot Amazon domain, but now they added like Ethereum dot uh, Amazon and uh, uh-huh. crypto dot Amazon, I think. But um, if they will make this step, it will be huge and it will be another big company that um, adds their value to, to cryptocurrency and, and, a lot of people will believe it more and more because big companies like Amazon are doing this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it will be a big game, a game changer if if, the, if, a, if a big uh, because I, I heard like um, it's called I think it's called Alibaba. Yes. Uh, they are thinking about it as well, and, and yeah, if, if if there is like billions of dollars that goes through those channels, and if that those dollars will go um, through bitcoins. And wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Wow, exactly. It will be a huge step, yeah. You know, one thing I think people may benefit from learning is, uh, you know, if, if, if we hear, if somebody who's new to this hears like, oh, geez, Bitcoin is worth 7564.46, I'm just checking it <laughs> as I'm saying it, they might think, well, I, it's, it, you know, I'm too late. I can't get in. It's too late. That's so so much value already. Talk about... Like the scale to which this can go, if you know, um, and, and the and t- that that this is still fairly early in the game. Yeah, no, it, it's really early in the game because if you if you analyze the situation, it's like zero point five percent of the total population in the world uh, is occupied with Bitcoin only. Yeah. Um, to take it to a smaller scale in Holland, it's like 0.1% of the 18 million people in Holland have a wallet. So it, we are really in the start. And this is really the beginning because we're not even at 1%. It's just a half of a percent that's in the world that's using Bitcoin. And um, I think there will be a growth till 2020. And I think then around that time, there will be about 15, maybe 20% of the world that is using the Bitcoin, but that's 20, that is, that's almost 40 times the, the, the amount it is at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's also the reason why Bitcoin has to grow up in value, because if more and more people need it and want it, um, they, there are just like 21 million Bitcoins, so they have to be divided between all those people that still want it. Right. So it has to be more in value. Everybody can buy a part of a Bitcoin. No, no people can buy one Bitcoin in, in, in a year. Maybe no, people can just buy 0.1 Bitcoin because it's like $25,000 worth in a few months. Right. And my assumption is that it will be around $10,000 in February 2018. And I believe in the, one, in the next six months it will uh, touch the $20,000 um, level. So that will be times four from yeah. now in six months' time. So... But it's, it's growing fast now. It's growing fast. Yeah, the, the, and you mentioned something important for people to understand. Economics is basic supply and demand, and the supply here is limited. The code of the software that yeah. I don't think can be changed, or if it can, it, 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 there's, a, there's no chance it's going to be changed. Um, we could get into why, but that would take too long. But there's 21 million Bitcoin that exist. Yeah. That will always be the case. That is that is written into the code, and so as demand yeah. goes up, say Amazon decides, all right, we're going to allow Bitcoin. Suddenly, it's a much more legitimate currency. Institutional investors, I think, right around now, are starting to get involved. You know, you think about your investment yeah. banking companies; they're starting to kind of think about maybe we should mix it up with this. When that happens, the the rocket ship of value that will be created through that is extraordinary. Yeah, and it's needed. It's needed. To be honest, I had a house. We sold our house. We had an investment uh, mortgage, we call it a thing. So that means you put like uh, uh, an amount of money every month into your mortgage and yes. you invest it. And then um, the bank 
tries to make more of it so right. you can pay off your mortgage. So after 12 years now, we've sold our house and I had to pay a little bit mortgage still. Um, and I calculated what my return of investment was. It was after 12 years, minus 2.3%. Wow. So I handed all my money to the bank and they took it for 12 years and they had a return on investment investment of minus 2.3%. I'm making at the moment like 20% a day. <laughs> right. And I don't have any clue exactly what I'm doing. I'm just a seller. Yeah. And how can a bank do that bad in 12 years? So, yeah, I think that's also a part of why people will uh, start um, wanting the Bitcoin. But there's also a human part to it. Uh, to be honest, I was, and many people still are very greedy. And uh, when a when a pro product like Bitcoin comes to the end, and there's just like one million uh, Bitcoins left, everybody wants it because that's how people are. They want to have what everybody else has, mm -hmm. and that will also take um, make sure the Bitcoin uh, uh, will will be worth like. I heard amount of 100k. I heard amount of one million. It's, I think 50k is enough. <laughs> but if you if you look at it, if you look at it like mathematical, it has to become 100,000 or 200,000 to be yeah. divided about around so many people. Yeah, I think the um, the currency demand worldwide. I've read this is like 1.5 trillion or something. Like that's just the kind of gross amount of. If you look at just dollars, current fiat currency, as you mentioned. Yeah. I think this is right, $1.5 trillion or something. They actually exist. And yeah. if you look at the amount of cryptocurrencies, and who knows which ones are sustainable, but Bitcoin, for example, is $21 million. It's That's it. It's a flat number. Yeah. And if that kind of value increases to meet the demand that we currently have for cash, it's – it's it's um, yeah. I don't even know what those numbers are. It's enormous. It's enormous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let's guess, hope. Yes, let's yeah. hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, where do you see your? Where, where do you and your family talk about? Where do you guys want to be in a year, two years, three years? Like, um, where does this go for you guys? Yeah, it's, it's really easy to answer that question because a lot of people have asked us that, and I want again, I want to make very clear: we didn't start this adventure to become millionaires. Right. Totally not our intention. But I think the chance is really big. We will be millionaires. Um, and I think with that, all that money, we will do our cont uh, contribution to the world. I, mm -hmm. I think we will combine our passion of traveling and helping people. And, and I think we will use that money to travel around the world and help uh, poor parts of the world who don't have any idea about blockchain or Bitcoin. And maybe we go help people setting up their accounts over there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can become like, how do you call it? Do some presentations here and there uh, about our story, what we what we did. We really don't know because we decided to live in the moment. So we decided to live now and not think about tomorrow or yesterday, but just enjoy the moment to the fullest. Um, but when we are sitting in, in with a glass glass of wine and. We are thinking, okay, what if we were a million? I think we will combine our passion and that we'll be traveling and um, meeting people all over the world, helping people, um, showing our kids the world. Let them touch an elephant instead of look at it in a book. It, yeah. Living life. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to put your kids back in school, by the way, depending on what goes on with, the, with this decision uh, next week or so? No, we have to be back in – we are back in Holland for three months now and – um, we had to put him back in school to make sure we didn't get more problems. Right. Um, but I, I think the decision will be that we um, we will we will be fined. And uh, to be clear, the maximum punishment in Holland is like uh, 30 days imprisonment for the dad. <laughs> but I don't think, I, I don't think they they will go that far. But um, yeah. I think it will be a big fine and. Um, if we receive a fine for what we did, because we, we homeschooled our children and we made sure they passed their grade and the oldest one went to high school, all without any problems. But if they want to find me for showing my kids the world, then I think the next day I will be at the 
uh, at the city council and then um, uh, how do you say it I will become an expat <laughs> yes yes so, exactly yeah. yeah 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 so then we will move to Spain where it is possible to live without uh, having to teach your children everything inside of like four walls <laughs> yeah and uh, and we start traveling uh, the way we like it yeah, one of our recent podcast guests, a fellow by the name of Ben Hewitt, raises – these kids are not in school or weren't for many years, and he raised them on a farm. And they just kind of participated in farm life. They learned. They followed their excitement. They traveled. And uh, anyway, it's it's the kind of education uh, path that's, that appeals to, to us for sure. And I think as we talk to more and more people, the people who are interested in Bitcoin, the people who are interested in like not having a nine to five, the people who are interested in minimalism are also interested in kind of alternative forms of education because the school structure yeah. is – doesn't really foster creativity or curiosity or excitement at all. Um, no, they kill it. Yeah, they kill it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Spain, Spain, I'm sure, would be a um, – an interesting place to be, and uh, I'm sure they would would welcome you there. Let's hope. If it comes, uh, to, we, if it comes to that, you know. <laughs> we, we had already had some invitations of going coming to Spain to Argentina. Um, oh, cool! A lot of families are inviting us now because they think the story is very inspiring, and so we are we're making a road map of where we can go. We have never been to the States, for example, never. Oh, wow. So, there has to be the first time at once. That's so. right. <laughs> That's right. Um, so I guess to, I guess we ought to start to wrap up here. But um, let's say listening to this podcast is a com- somebody who has a little money, maybe that they could invest. Um, but let's say they don't know what to do. Like, what are some first few steps somebody could take right now to get involved to get into this mix of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? I think it's really easy. Just go online. Um, there are a lot of beautiful sites that help you. I know of a site that's called, uh, I think it's called CryptoCoinSupport.com. Uh-huh. And it helps you with the basic steps. Just uh, opening a wallet online or buying a hardware wallet. And, and then just start buying your Bitcoins. And for people that are still very busy with work and everything, just buy one Bitcoin or buy just for half Bitcoin and just see what happens the next few months. And if the money becomes more and you create a little bit more trust in the new uh, new kind of money, um, then you can go in more and more and more. I, I, I'm, I'm not advising anybody to do what we did to go all in right. because we, are, we, we realize that we are taking a risk, in our opinion, a very small risk. Um, but I think it's really easy. Open a wallet, buy some Bitcoins and just start participating in the new cryptocurrency world. Yeah, and one thing that'll happen is, at least as it's happened for us, is as you you invest this money, you see how easy it is. Like we started with Coinbase, which yeah. there's there's a downfall to Coinbase, which is that they have high, higher fees than other exchanges, yeah. but it's fine to get started. And we started there, yeah. and I think we put we put some money in, and then within a day it had climbed, you know, like four or yeah. five percent. And the next day it climbed another four or five. So it's like holy shit! Like we're we're seeing our money yeah. grow right in front of our very eyes. Yeah. That will inspire you to get more involved, <clears throat> no doubt about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just, I, don't, I think people just have to stop um, stop living in fear for losing everything and stop, start following your dreams and your passion. I think then everything will go as it should go. And when you say your dreams, like what do you, what, what's, what do you guys want? I mean, uh, you know, you want to be able to travel, you want to be mobile, it sounds like. And certainly philanthropically inclined in terms of growing wealth, which is very in line with what we're doing too. It's not like we want to buy six mansions. It's like no, we want to. No, we want to have the freedom. We actually don't want a lot of stuff. One thing we've learned, as you've yeah. learned too, here is living out of this van has been like there's just nothing quite like yeah. you know sitting in a chair under a starry sky, with vast wilderness around you. Like that's as good as it gets. You know. Um, yeah. Um, but but like, do you do you see yourselves as always kind of being mobile and um, traveling, or are there places in the world where you could see yourself like growing roots and settling down? Um, boy, that's a difficult question. I, I, th- I think I prefer 
being mobile all my life and not in the speed we did like the last nine months. We traveled a lot of countries in a short period of time. But um, at, at, what's the, what isn't more beautiful than, for example, um, going to the States and stay in one region for a few months and my kids learn to speak English on a proper way, not the way I am doing. Um, and next time you go to um, a Spanish-speaking country and you stay there for a year and the kids learn to speak Spanish, I, I think the kids learn a lot of things by doing that and, and, yeah. and myself as well. And I just want to meet a lot of cultures. I think one of my biggest dreams is to be mobile and independent and um, have my freedom. Um, I, I think if you if you sell everything and you don't have anything to bother anymore about and you have the freedom of choosing where to go every day in life, not waking up every day at eight and having to go to your job or to your work, right. but just choose what you like to do. If you want to go fishing, go fishing. <laughs> and if you want to go ride a horse, go ride a horse. And if you want to trade, trade with Bitcoins. Um, but I think freedom is very important. And I think um, that's my biggest dream is that nobody will take our freedom. And we will keep that um, for our kids. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Well, uh, we have a uh, we have a usual kind of coda of three three quick questions that we ask all of our guests. Um, and the first of those is, what book or books, Didi, would you recommend that every person should read? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just know the Dutch titles. At the moment, I'm living, reading a really good book of Mo Gardat, he's called. He was a senior executive of Google, and he's lost his son, and he wrote a book about um, happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a mathematical... mathematical a calculation he makes about of, uh, of of happiness, and he wrote a book about it. Uh, oh, wow. That's a real eye opener for us. Um, then there is a book um, I was reading as well. I will check for one moment because I don't know the English titles. Oh yeah, sure. sure. It's all in Dutch, what I'm reading mostly. Yeah. Uh, if you have one sec. Um, um, it's, I think it's called A Whole New Brain in English. A Whole New Brain? Let's see. A Whole New Brain, I think it's called. Oh. It's, a, it's a very inspiring book about um, how your left and your right part of the brain work and how the... Are we, how the world is changing and we are changing to use the right part of the, of the brain. I think, I think it's a really it's, good um, book. Yeah, I, I, found, I found a book here by Daniel Pink, A Whole New Mind. I bet that's A Whole it. New Mind, yeah, that, that's, that's the one. It. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's a really nice book. Um, cool. And then there is a book I'm, I've been reading a last, and it was, but I don't think a lot of people will like it. <laughs> What's uh, that? It, it's a book about. I'm I'm thinking about a title. It's it, it's a book about uh, meditation, mm-hmm. and uh, but on a very. Uh, it's written very cool. Um, I don't know the title at the moment. No, I don't know the title. Do you remember the name of the the author? Um, I think it's Sadhguru. Ah, Sadhguru, cool. Yeah. Do you have so, a meditation uh, practice? Uh, yeah, I do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. My wife, my wife does it a lot, and she told me maybe it's good for you. Now you're uh, busy with the computer so many times again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I relate to that. I'm definitely more into technology than my wife, and I benefit, I think, therefore, from meditation quite a lot. Um, yeah. Do you guys practice oh, together? Uh, yeah, sorry. And the third book, the, the third book, the, the thing I, I didn't yeah. know the English word for, is "Solve for Happy." Solve for happy. Solve for happy. And it's that's a really good. 
And that's by Sadhguru or mm. that's somebody else? No, that one by Mo Gaudat. So, oh, that's the first book. Got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see that. Yeah, Mo Gaudat. Yeah, yeah, cool. Great. That's, oh, real. that's a really... So Sadhguru, um, A Whole New Mind, and Solve for yeah. Happy. We will... We'll link to those in the show notes. That's those. It's great three books. Um, so, second question is: What thing, item, or keepsake have you held on to the longest, and why? Which is particularly um, a good question for you, as you sold everything. Was there anything that you specifically kept or wanted to hold on to? Um. Yeah, there was one thing. There was a was a guitar. I received from my father and mother when I was 11 years old. Wow. I still have that one. That one was where I learned to spiel, to play a little bit of guitar, and I'm, I'm never doing that one, uh, never giving that one away. Yeah, nice. Is that electric or acoustic? Acoustic, Spanish acoustic. Oh, man. Yeah. Can you play? Do you play a lot? I, I can play a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so the last question is, what are you most excited about now? Like, what is right in front of you that you're getting into? It could be cryptocurrency, a specific cryptocurrency, anything. What what excites you the most right now? I, I think the fact we're close to really stepping out of the system and really taking our kids out of school and really participating in this revolution that is going on in the system. Um, I think that makes me very happy because it makes every dream I want to have, um, it makes it possible to live for those dreams. So I think that's really exciting that the world is changing. And, and I, think, um, I think through all these media attention and stories we are reading and um, maybe a new addition to our other um, to our um, passion will be inspiring people to live the way we live, to live, to look at what you're doing with your money, to live a little bit more minimalism uh, style. And um, I think that was the most inspiring of the, the, the most important thing now in our life. Yeah, that's cool. And, and you, yeah. you, as we've been corresponding and setting up this interview, by the way, you've, you've alluded to how much media attention you've gotten. It's like every day, isn't it for you? It's um, yeah. At, at the moment, it's it's like disturbing my trading a lot <laughs> because it's like um, to give you an example. It's now Sunday, and yesterday I had a Ukraine television uh, crew at our house. They were making a doku. Doku. Today I'm talking to you. Tomorrow there is a guy from Berlin with a television show. They are coming. Tuesday, I have to be in court for my kids. Right. <laughs> uh, Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, um, Wednesday, there is a Dutch television show that's going to visit us for uh, filming a doco. Uh, Thursday, a, a group of out of London is coming to shoot a short short doco, and then Friday we have a free day, <laughs> and then Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday they are coming from Wall Street. Wow, and this is all about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies and and the it's act and, and about, selling it all for Bitcoin. Yeah, it's all about minimalism and um, and cryptocurrency. Yeah. So in a way, by taking this dramatic action, you've become an example that people. It's already kind of like your dream is coming true, like inspiring others, helping people, kind of take control, and and all this attention is i guess i mean it sounds pretty tiring but but um completely in line with what you're trying to do yeah and and in one hand it is really tiring but on the other hand we get a lot of energy of it because yeah. um people start to understand you and not um uh, how do you say it? they just start to understand your story and and you get a lot of energy from all those po positive uh, reactions of people. Of course, people. There are a few people that are not reacting very positively, but that's always the part. And I, we don't mind. We respect everybody for the way they are doing life, and you know, we are doing the life the same uh, in another way. And I hope they re will respect us. And if they criticize us, yeah, it's okay. 
some criticism uh, is good for us, and we learn of it. Um, but it's uh, we're still not realizing that um, how big it is what we are doing now because there is a lot of media attention, but, but we're still wearing the same clothes and we're still going to the same toilet and we are still a happy family on the campsite. And um, but it could be um, yeah, it could be the next step in our life, but we don't know for sure if it is at the moment. But yeah, if if you have to. Um, if, if we have to make like the level of media attention an indicator of if, if this is will life changing for us, yeah, th then it will be. Yeah, sure. But media works in a different, in a special way. In a, in a month, nobody knows us anymore, maybe, and it's just, it's fine with us as well. That's right. That's right. Well, one good thing about family is is that you can keep each other in check and keep keep the the mission, the direction true. Um, that's yeah. been the case with us. It sounds like you've got a really strong family there, which is worth so much more than any of anything that we're talking about. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's really more about. Yeah, exactly. Well, Didi, let me let you go before we do so. Um, where should people connect with you online? What do you? What would you like people to know about what's coming up for you? I know you guys have a website and an Instagram and Facebook. Why don't you share yeah. uh, those profiles with everybody? Yeah, we have a um, we have a, vlog, a blog. It's called YoloFamilyTravel.com, and our Instagram and Facebook is all the same YoloFamilyTravel.com. Uh, people are bombing us to the Bitcoin family at the moment, <laughs> so there there are some domains that's called I think the Bitcoin family, but uh, they are they are directly um, uh, sending people. To yolofamilytravel.com. Cool. And YOLO standing for you only live once, I guess, right? Yeah. When we were in Bali with our kids and, and they wanted to have a, uh, on a world trip, they wanted to have a blog for the grandparents. And they, we were like, okay, what would the name be? And then we were walking to all those shopping streets and there were like t-shirts with YOLO on it. And I asked my oldest daughter, hey, what is it? YOLO, what does it mean? Dad, it's you only live once. And and yeah, then that in combination with my parents, which is I very young, okay, you only live once, then we make it yolofamilytravel.com. Nice, nice. <laughs> so that was the, the reason we, we used that domain. That's great. Yeah, I remember seeing those t-shirts in Bali. Um, yeah. And something about, there, there was a few t-shirts there that I, I didn't know what they meant, and, and nor did yeah. my wife. And I don't think we still know what they meant. Something about <laughs> Rhonda, some weird stuff, I don't know. But YOLO, yeah. I have caught on to that in the last couple of years, and that's great. We'll link to those. Mm. We'll link to your website and to your Facebook and Instagram wow, in thanks. the show notes here so people can follow you guys. Because um, certainly okay. your, your oh, story nice is, you. absolutely, no, no, no. Um, it's the least we can do. Um, in the in the busyness of your life and schedule, we're really grateful for this time, Dee Dee. Thanks very much for talking with us and not only talking about your life, but hopefully inspiring others to understand what's really going on here and that <clears throat> there's an opportunity for folks now. Absolutely, it's not too late to get involved and to explore cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. It's start, It's just starting and we're flying to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for this week's Own Stream podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this awesome interview with Didi Taihutu. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode for links to everything mentioned, including Didi's site and the social media profiles, plus links to the books we talked about and also some links to the Bitcoin resources we discussed as well. All of that can be found at ownstream.co backslash Didi Taihutu. That's ownstream.co backslash D as in David, I, D as in David, I, T-A-I-H-U-T-T-U. Also, please sign up for our weekly tip-off email at ownstream.co and just click the sign up button in the upper right-hand corner. This is where we share each Monday three cool things we've learned in the last week in the areas of lifestyle, business, and spirit. This could be an amazing quote, individual tip, or tool designed to bring you more freedom and power in your life. So definitely sign up for that again at ownstream.co and just click sign up. Finally, we would love it if you'd leave us a review on iTunes. We really need your help in expanding our reach. 
helping us to inspire more people and spread the amazing ideas discussed on this episode with Didi Taihutu and others too. If it feels right to you, simply go to iTunes, search for the Own Stream podcast, click ratings and reviews, then click that fifth star and leave us a brief comment on how this episode has inspired you. Thank you so much for considering that. We are very, very grateful. Also, we're on Twitter at OwnStream and on Instagram where we post regularly at own underscore stream. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the OwnStream podcast. To learn more and connect with us, please visit ownstream.co or follow us on Twitter at OwnStream and Instagram at own underscore stream.